today we're going to look at how we find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of two numbers. Now it's very important before you attempt these types of questions that you watch the previous video on how to find a number as a product of its prime factors because that's what we're going to use to identify a highest common factor or lowest common multiple for two numbers. Um, we'll start off by looking at how we find highest common factor and I'm going to do two examples here and I'll explain what highest common factor is. So if I was to be asked what is the highest common factor of two numbers, well, we know that a factor of a number is a number that divides into it, leaving no remainder. If I was to look at again in this case, we're going to look at finding the highest common factor of 24 and 16. I know there's a number of common factors, as in numbers that go into both 24 and 16, and it's much easier when we're looking at smaller numbers to identify what the answer actually is. When you have two smaller numbers like this, it's, it can be as straightforward and as simple to identify um, the factors of each number. So if I was looking at 24 and 16, well, you might look at that right away and spot, well, they're both part of the eight times tables. Eight, in this case, is gonna be the highest common factor, just to show you. If I was to identify all the factors of each number and do it as I'd previously shown in pairs, uh, starting off with the smallest number that goes into 24, for example, is 1, and it's 1 times 24. That's a power of factors that gives me 24. Uh, moving up from 1, we get 2, 2 times 12, so we're getting two factors at a time. 3, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. That shows me all the factors of 24. Okay, and if I was to do the same for 16, I've got 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 3 doesn't go into it, and we have 4 times 4 as it is a score number. And the common factors are obviously the numbers that appear in both lists here. So, I mean, obviously 1 is a common factor, 2, 4 as well, and of course 8. And the highest of those is 8. So the highest common factor of 24 and 16 is 8. And when we're dealing with smaller numbers, it's fine just to do that. The trick is, or the difficulty is, when we look at larger numbers such as 72 and 108. If I was to sit and try to do that with numbers such as 72 or 108, they have a lot more factors and it'll be quite a bit of time working through that. So there's three steps here that I'm going to show you, which will allow you to always work out the highest common factor. So... These are the steps. What we first have to do is find both numbers as a product of their prime factors. And again, that's why it's important to make sure you've watched the previous video on finding a number as a product of its prime factors. We then need to identify the shared factors using the Venn diagram, and I'll show you how to do that. And then we multiply the shared factors to find the highest common factor. Okay, so the first step, finding both numbers as a product of their prime factors, and we'll start off with 72. So if you remember, how we do this, and my advice was to start off by dividing by the smallest possible prime factor that will go into 72, and that is of course two. And while this number, while this remains even, just keep using two. Two into 72 gives me 36, okay? 36 is still even, so I can continue to use two. And the numbers down the left here will be my prime factors. Two into 36 gives me 18. I can still use 2, 2 into 18 gives me 9, and now I'm going to have to use 3, because 2 will not go into 9, and I have to use the next prime factor up, which is 3. 3 into 9 gives me 3, and the only thing I can divide 3 by to get 1 is 3 itself, okay? So again, that's just how we find the numbers of product of prime factors, and we've done it for 72. We'll now do it for 108, okay? So 108 is an even number, divided by 2, I get 54. 54 divided by 2 gives me 27. I can't use 2 anymore because 27 is an odd number, but I know 27 is part of my 3 times tables. Again, this is the type of question that will appear in your M1, 2, 3, or 4 uh, exam, so you're within your rights to use a calculator. 3 into 27 gives me 9. 3 again into 9 gives me 3. And again, the only thing I can divide 3 by is 3 itself to give me 1. So I've broken both numbers down into their prime factors. And these are the prime factors uh, down the left hand side of each letter. I then use a Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram is this type of diagram where we have two overlapping circles. The circle on the left represents factors 
of 72. The circle on the right represents factors of 108 and where they overlap in the middle is where our shared factors are going to be. And always give yourself plenty of space when you're doing that. Okay. So if I look at both lists and if I look at the twos first off, I have three twos in my list for 72 and two twos in my list for 108. So the most I can share is two twos because this list only has two twos. So what I do is I put two twos in the middle. Okay. And I struck two twos off from each list. And this remaining two, which is over here as a factor of 72, will go here on the left because it only is a factor of 72. Okay, and I can stroke that off as well. Now, our factors of three. Okay, so I have two threes over here, three threes over here. So again, I can only share at the very most two threes because there's two threes here. So two threes in the middle. And I'll stroke two threes off from each list. And this three, of course, is left on its own is a factor of 108. So it has to go specifically in the 108 part of our Venn diagram. Now, if we just refresh ourselves with the third and final step, multiply the shared factors to find the highest common factor. So our highest common factor is found by multiplying these numbers in the middle here. 2 times 2 by 3 by 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36, okay? So 36 is the highest common factor of 72 and 108. And again, you can very easily check your answer. So how you do that to identify whether 36 is indeed a factor of 72? Divide 72 by 36, doing it in your calculator. It'll go into it twice. And also to check it's a factor of 108. Put that into your calculator, that will give you three. So it goes into it three times. So 36 is indeed a factor of both these numbers and it is in fact the highest common factor. Okay? So that's how we find highest common factor factor. I mean it will work for this example up here also. But again, when we're dealing with two, two smaller numbers and it's it's much easier to spot that has common factor, you don't have to do all this. But I mean, this method would also work here also if you wanted to try it out. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to find the lowest common multiple. And the handy thing about has common factor and lowest common multiple is that they're almost exactly the same in, in how you identify them. Okay. The trick is not to get confused. There is only one difference, which is in the third and final step. All right. Now, just to explain what the lowest common multiple of a number of two numbers is. Okay. So, a multiple is a number that's part of uh, a numbers times table. So, multiples of four, for example, will be four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and so on, and they go on and on. Okay. Multiples of 6 would be 6, 12, 18, 24. This first example is simply asking us to find the lowest common multiple of 4 and 6. So, a common multiple is a number that appears in both numbers times tables, as we can see from the list, for the two lists I've written out there, 4 times tables and the 6 times tables. The smallest number, the lowest number, that appears in both is 12. So, in this case, 12 is simply the LCM, so those common multiple of 12 here. And again, when we're dealing with smaller numbers, it can be as straightforward as continuing on your times tables to look and see where you can find uh, the first number that appears in both, and that's fine. The difficulty is if we look at an example like we have here in question two, and I've used the same numbers from our highest common factor example, just to show you how similar they are. The difficulty is, I certainly don't know my 72 or my 108 times tables. So we have to use these three steps to identify our lowest common multiple. So the first step, find both numbers as products of their prime factors. Again, exactly the same as what we did here. Identify the shared factors using a Venn diagram. Again, exactly the same as here. And the only difference is in the third and final step where we multiply all factors in the Venn diagram to find the lowest common multiple. Okay, so we'll make our way through the question. Okay, so first off, um, both numbers as a product of their prime factors. So this is exactly the same as what we just did in 
as previous highs coming factor equations. 72 divided by 2 is 36. Divided by 2 again is 18. Divided by 2 again is 9. Then we have to use 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay. We'll do the same for 108. Divided by 2 is 54. Divided by 2 is 27. Divided by 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And the only thing I divide 3 by is 3 itself to give me 1. Okay. Now we'll use our Venn diagram. And again, it's going to be exactly the same as this. So, then to find the shared factors. So, I have three twos here and two twos here. So, I can only share at the very most two twos. So, I'll put two twos in the middle and stroke two twos off from each list. This two that's left on its own over here goes in the left hand part of the Venn diagram. I'll stroke it out. I have two threes over here and three threes here. So, I can share at the very most two threes. So, I'll stroke two threes out from each list, making sure I put two threes in the middle. And this three that's left on its own is a factor of 108, so it goes on the right hand side. Now, so far, everything has been exactly the same as finding the highest common factor of 72 and 108. The only difference with finding the lowest common multiple of 72 and 108 is that we multiply all the factors that are in this Venn diagram. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. And I will just point out that it doesn't actually matter what order you multiply them in. Okay? So if you were to do 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 2, 3 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2, you could do 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. If you wanted, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you multiply all the numbers that are in the Venn diagram. And when we put that into our calculator, it gives us 216. And again, if you wanted to check if that was correct, you can use your calculator. If this is part of the 72 times tables, then 72 should divide in to 216. And again, putting that into your calculator, 216 divided by 72, it goes three times exactly. And we can also do the same by checking if 108 goes into it. 216 divided by 108 goes into it two times exactly. Okay? So that is how we find the lowest common multiple of two numbers. Steps between highest common factor and lowest common multiple are almost identical. Just keep in mind that third and final step for finding the highest common factor, we only, we only multiply together the shared factors in the middle. If we're trying to find the lowest common multiple, we multiply all the factors that are in the Venn diagram. Try the questions and see how you get on, and anything you're not sure about, just ask.